Hi, Gateway friends and family, and thanks for joining us this evening for Gateway's Church at Home Good Friday services. You know, if someone had told me at the beginning of the year, hey, let's have online-only services for Good Friday and Easter, I would have said, yeah, that's not the plan. And if someone had said, hey, let's have your kids do distance learning and work, and all the adults can work from home, I would have also said, yeah, that's not the plan. And hasn't that just been the theme for this spring? Hashtag not the plan. You know, things don't always go our way, but the good news is, is that God can work everything out for good. I'm sure the Israelites, when they were wandering around for 40 years, probably had conversations with God saying, you know, God, this isn't the plan. I'm just so thankful that while we're sheltering at home, we're sheltering in our homes, not in tents, and we have electricity and running water. And there's just so much that we can be thankful for. You know, normally tonight we'd be gathering together in a building, and just remembering Jesus and what he's done for us and being thankful for that. So I'm thankful tonight that we can use this technology to still gather together even though we're in different rooms and we can still spend that time being thankful together and worshiping together. So let's go ahead and remember what Jesus has done for us and be thankful for all of those things.
Sweet wine, sweet wine, oh you heavens, let the praise grow up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All his children, clean as pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Let's sing that swing wide. Swing wide, though you heavens, let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All his children, clean and pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. So sing it. Swing wide, though you heavens. Let the praise go up as the walls come down All creation, everything with breath Repeat the sound For His children, good grace, good God Welcome to Gateway Online again, and thanks for joining us tonight as we celebrate the Lord's Last Supper. Now, about 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was ministering his last day on earth, he told his disciples to go to a home, to an upper room, and to prepare to celebrate their annual festival of Passover. Passover was really designed to be observed in people's homes. So we're really in good form tonight as we celebrate with our self-shelter in place. Now today, <clears throat> in 2020, we're going through a big time coronavirus crisis. We've been ordered to social distance ourselves and self-shelter. We, we don't know when it's going to end. We, it's really hard. It's completely uncertain. And we are all suffering and endeavoring to cope. As a community of believers, how can we cope with this stress and make it through this time of trouble? So here's a few tools that I want to invite you to participate with us tonight. One tool is worship in song. Praise is a powerful weapon when you are fighting fear. Now another one is words of encouragement and wisdom from our friends people like you who are going through the same stuff. The Bible says there's safety in a multitude of counselors. So listen to the testimonies and the ways that people just like you are coping with this. Listen, the point is you are not alone. We're going through this together. And the third thing I wanna invite you to do tonight is to pray. <clears throat> Prayer is another wonderful tool, and it's a part of communion. It's, it's really designed for us to examine ourselves. And so you pray, you confess your sin to the Lord, confess the sins of the country, confess the sins of the world if you want to. The Bible literally says to cast your cares onto him, for he carries 
your burdens with you. Here, think about it. Why should you carry your burden all by yourself when Jesus invites you to let him carry it with you? So after we spend some time sharing in music and in testimony, I'm going to share a short uh, communion meditation and then I'll invite you to partake communion together with us. Everyone needs compassion Love that's never failing Then mercy fall on me Everyone needs forgiveness Kindness of a Savior The hope of a nation Savior, He can move the mountains my God is mighty to say, He is mighty to say forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. is mighty to save 
names, COVID-19, coronavirus, pandemic, death, isolation, separation. These words bring anxiety to us and can wreak havoc with our emotions. Life's a little crazy right now. A few weeks ago, I was looking forward to finishing my eighth grade year. I was excited to be in my last middle school play that we worked really hard on. I was looking forward to hanging out with my friends before we went off to different high schools. Most of all, I was excited for my eighth grade promotion. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to get to do all of that. I was thinking today about the churches closing their doors and the situation that we're all in, in this time in our lives, and it's happening all over the world. It's not just us. Well, I want to tell you, I'm, I'm not uh, afraid. I'm not afraid right now because I remember I, I just remember every time, everything that God has done for me. During my devotion time today, the song by Hillsong called What a Beautiful Name. And so I checked it out, I listened to it, and I'm worshiping and crying and just it's overwhelmed with truly the powerful name of Jesus. But with all the uncertainties, I know that God is constant and that comforts me. God's always there to talk, and He can't be isolated or canceled or shut down. He's always there. But you know, Jesus has the answer for everything that we, we do in our lives in the Bible. And I thank God for the truth that He that He puts forth to all of us. When our house burnt down, um, uh, I remembered how thoroughly God had taken care of us every day up until that moment. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Um, I would encourage you, if you haven't already, to, uh, in addition to your daily devotion, listen to songs that speak joy and hope into our life. We need to kind of combat the negativity. And um, saying out loud the name of Jesus, it, it just brings power to our life. So when I'm afraid, I know that I can trust that God is there and He has a plan. So I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful for the pastors that we have and for the word that is getting out and for people that are that are getting in contact with each other and telling each other you love them. And I, I really love my, love my church and love all my friends that are in the church. I, I didn't have a clue how, somehow though, he was gonna make me um, okay. He was gonna provide. He, he had always provided before and I remembered. And I'd just like to encourage you folks to remember all that God has already done in your lives. The name of Jesus truly is a beautiful name. The one who reigns forever, He is 
a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Sing my strength. My strength is in your name. Victory, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Last Supper, Jesus used two of the items that were in the Passover meal. And there was more than just these two items on the menu, but he used the bread and the wine to teach about himself, the Messiah, and why he came and did what he did. The Passover meal also included, for sure, roasted lamb and some bitter herbs. And I'm, well, I would have loved to hear what Jesus had to say about those. He could have said a lot, I'm sure, but he doesn't. He just uses the, the bread and the wine. In Matthew chapter 26, in verse 26, it says, As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. Now, the bread that they used in the Passover wasn't their normal bread. I mean, here, here's some normal bread that, you know, rises with yeast. We love it. We're going to eat this. We will eat this very loaf of bread. But they weren't allowed to eat that bread for Passover. It had to be unleavened bread. Flat. Doesn't rise. You can make it quick. Remember, eat this in haste. And what this unleavened bread, this is actually kosher unleavened bread that they still use in the Passover Seder today. We use this very same matzah uh, unleavened bread in communion at Gateway every week. They had to eat this unleavened bread for seven days, a whole week. And all of the yeast that they had in their house, all of it had to be totally removed from the house. Now, why is that? Well, the, the yeast symbolized sin. And the moral application to that is that God wants us all to be holy, for he is holy. We're supposed to stop sinning. 
remove sin from your life. Now, that's really great advice for all of us, isn't it? Now, this kosher unleavened bread has no yeast, but there's another fascinating thing about this bread for me, that the Passover Seder unleavened bread, it's required to be two things. It has to be pierced. Can you see those little holes? It has to be pierced and striped. And, and I can clearly see this this whole line of, of piercing and stripes that this has. Now, that's fascinating to me. In fact, years ago, I asked a rabbi, I said, why does the Passover Seder bread, why is it required to be striped and pierced? And you know what he said? He said, I don't know. He didn't have an answer. But you know what I found in scripture is that there's a great insight from the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 53, it says, but he, meaning the Messiah, was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped or striped so that we could be healed. And all of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Seems to me like God has embedded a witness, a testimony about Jesus into the very kosher unleavened bread that the Jews use every year at the Passover Seder and that we use every week for communion at Gateway. Now, Jesus said to eat this bread. Don't just look at it. It's not just like a ritual to kind of wave your hand over. You're supposed to eat this bread. Why? Well, bread doesn't nourish you unless you get it on the inside. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, 4, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus prayed, Lord, give us, Heavenly Father, give us this day our daily bread. Listen, the communion bread is so rich in meaning. We need to feed on the word every day. You need to let Jesus into your heart, into your mind, into your spirit, folks, into your life. Jesus does a lot more good for you if you get him in you than if he's not in you. So we, as we partake of the bread, Father, we pray and we thank you for your son, Jesus. And he said, this bread is his body which is given for us. We don't take this, Father, thinking that we're worthy because we're not. We take this as a gift for all that you've done to deliver us from the bondage of sin and that Jesus, his life, his spirit, his word can live in us and nourish us and give us the strength to live a life that's pleasing to you. Let's partake of the bread. Now, one thing about drinking or about eating unleavened bread, you're going to want to drink something afterwards, right? And after the meal was over, Jesus took the wine and he said, this is my blood poured out for the remission of our sins. Jesus died. Many people today, they're dying all around us of this coronavirus. We're on alert every single day. I've got to tell you, as a pastor, I've seen a lot of death. So I want you to get this. Jesus Christ died. He was the most innocent man who ever lived. He was the greatest spiritual teacher ever. He was literally the best man ever. In fact, he was God in the flesh and Jesus bled poured out his life and died for you. That is the price for Passover. That is the meaning of communion. And that is the price for your forgiveness of sins. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who took away the sin of the world. Let's get personal. Jesus took away my sin. Why? Because I let him. 
I asked him to come into my heart when I was five. And Jesus, the Lamb of God, can take away your sin if you'll let him, if you'll let him into your heart. You know, for, for Passover, a crucial element was that the blood of the Lamb was required to be splashed on the top and the sides of the door frame that led into the house. Their entry way of the house had to have blood in the middle of the top and blood on each side. Did you see that? Blood on the top and on each side. And that blood of the sacrificial lamb, the Passover sacrifice that that family had done, that had to cover their home or the death angel was going in there. The death angel only passed over that house if you were inside the home that was covered by the sacrifice of the Passover blood. Friend, Jesus suffered and bled for us. Jesus started bleeding that evening when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. He bled as the soldiers whipped and tortured him during his trial. He bled again as they put the crown of thorns on his head. Jesus bled when he picked up the cross and started carrying it on the Via Dolorosa, the, the path of pain, the way of pain. He bled again as they laid him down and nailed his hands and feet on the cross. And then finally crucified. Jesus, as he was bleeding, as he was praying to God, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. Jesus bled, and finally he said, it is finished, and he died. Friends, Jesus paid the ultimate price so that you and I could have forgiveness of sins. He died on the cross that you and I might live now and forever in the presence of God. That is why we are never supposed to take this cup lightly. This cup represents the very best of God, his pure love and forgiveness for anyone, in fact, for everyone who says, Father, forgive me of my sins. Scripture says, and he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks to God for it. And he gave it to the disciples and he said, each of you drink from it for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. The Bible very clearly and and solemnly says, we need to examine ourselves as we partake of communion. Father, we pray and we want to look inside in our own hearts to start with. God, who can say they are without sin? I certainly have messed up so many times. God, we, we pray that you would forgive our sins. Friend, you just look in your heart Ask the Holy Spirit to put a, a lamp into your heart and to show you things that, that might be displeasing to him that you need to confess and make right with God. God, we pray. We confess our sins and the sins of our families and our children. God, of our communities, or of our culture that are not living ways to honor or please you. We live in a world that has no fear of you and yet, God, you have stopped the whole world to get our attention right now. May we pay heed to the words that the Holy Spirit is speaking to his people and to the world that there is a God and that we must give an account. And Father, that means we're all guilty. But we thank you tonight for the blood of the Lamb of God who takes away our sin. Thank you. Jesus died, he gave his body for us, 
He shed his blood and died for us. Is it too much to ask that we live for him? Good Friday. How can one describe such a day? The wrongdoing of all humanity putting to an end an innocent man, the Son of God. This is the story of Jesus' death by way of a cross, all in one moment bringing death to the bright light of our future. He never stopped loving us, and yet this is the incredible part of it. Our sin stopped his heart. Our sin drove the nails firmly in the hands of God. All along, these were the plans. We told ourselves that we were in control, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. The brutal beating, the inhuman flogging, the naked humiliation. Heaven watched and saw it all. Our rebellion, our guilt, our shame, erasing the very notion of reconciling us with God, our sin and our debt, overcoming Jesus. Here is our King, obliterated. The enemy laughing, his plans unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of freedom rising. Now God's people are utterly broken. Behold the chains of mortality. Yes, this is what is true. We had heard the stories of old. The lost are found, the blind can see, the weak are made strong. But now we are witnesses to this reality. God is dead. We almost believed there is a way of redemption. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a peace beyond understanding. Now we know better. For us, we can say that God is encapsulated in this one realization. The single greatest sacrifice in human history is finished. How clearly we can see it. So what's so good about Good Friday? Just one thing, that the blood of Jesus can reverse the curse of sin and raise the dead to life. How clearly we can see it is finished. The single greatest sacrifice in human history encapsulated in this one realization. We can say that God is for us. Now we know better. There is a peace beyond understanding. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a way of redemption. We had almost believed God is dead, but now we are witnesses to this reality. The weak are made strong. The blind can see. The lost are found. We had heard the stories of old. Yes, this is what is true. The chains of mortality utterly broken. Behold, freedom rising. Now God's people are unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of the enemy laughing. His plans obliterated. Here is our King, Jesus, overcoming our sin and our debt, reconciling us with God, erasing the very notion of our rebellion, our guilt, our shame. Heaven watched and saw it all, the naked humiliation, the inhuman flogging, the brutal beating, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. We told ourselves that we were in control. All along, these were the plans firmly in the hands of God. Our sin drove the nails, our sin stopped his heart, and yet this is the incredible part of it. He never stopped loving us. The bright light of our future all in one moment bringing death to death by way of a cross. This is the story of Jesus, the Son of God, an innocent man putting to an end the wrongdoing of all humanity. How can one describe such a day? Good Friday.
with Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in they laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance by every soul Messiah still and all alone Oh, praise the again for joining us this evening for Good Friday services. I hope it was a blessing to you. And also, don't forget, if we can be praying for you this week, go to gatewaycc.org forward slash card and fill out your requests and we'd love to pray with you. 
Also, don't forget to join us Sunday morning at 9 a.m. or 1045 on Facebook or YouTube for our Church at Home Home services. And please feel free to share these links with others to bring the hope of Christ to them as well. Here's hoping that I can see you soon. And until I can give you a hug in person, here's a high five from me too. See you soon.